and welcome to Fenextra. I'm Emily Haller and we're here at Cybos 2015 and I'm speaking to Ed Ho of DNH. Thank you very much for joining me. Thank you, Emily. So could you tell me a little bit about DNH's integration with Funtech? It's an awesome outcome for, for what was legacy Funtech. So we're now a division of DNH, but it's such a complementary combination between the two. Um, we were private equity owned and we could have been acquired by a competitor. And in those, it gets very messy because you have overlapping uh, products, for example, and solutions. In the sense of DNH, um, it's very complementary. They don't have anything in our space, and that's why they were very interested in us. But I think it's an awesome outcome because all we're working on right now is general corporate integration. But as far as products, our people, and our customers, it's continuing business as usual and our growth strategy. So it's a very, very positive outcome for us. So how are DNH's global transaction banking solutions customers affected by this? They're affected very positively. So one, the uncertainty of our private equity ownership is no longer there. So I think that's really good. And DNH is a, is a publicly traded, very well capitalized institution. They're very focused about innovation and growth. So for us, we're seeing a lot of capital, additional capital directed our way so that we can continue to grow on behalf of our customer base. Additionally, there are customers in Canada and in the United States there are DNH customers where we can cross sell and upsell our solutions with their, with their customer base and vice versa. So I think there's a lot of opportunity. So the foundation of this acquisition is really based on revenue synergies. And what key trends do you see impacting the financial institutions? Oh, there is a tremendous amount of work being done around efficiencies in organizations. And so if I think about some of the new things that are coming, real-time or faster payments is escalating around the world, and that's a major trend. The United States, for example, is a major focus area for us because they're, they're going through an adoption cycle in the next two years. Um, but that is cascading into Australia, which is in the middle of it. But places like Sweden and the UK and Singapore have already adopted faster payments. And for consumers and corporates alike, it will provide tremendous benefits in terms of having a new payment type or lower cost payment type. And so what banks are very focused on is how do they lower their per transaction costs. And our job is to provide a value proposition to support them. There's other new emerging technologies like blockchain, for example, and virtual ledgers. Some of the things that underlie um, technologies such as Ripple, for example, which banks want to take advantage of, which again lowers the cost of the transactions to not only their firm, but they can lower the fees to their customer base as well. So there's a cascading benefit along the food chain. And so we're here to help enable the banks to do that. We are working with Ripple, for example, but we're also working in other ways where we can work with the virtual uh, ledgers that are, that are available to help facilitate payment transactions for customers. Ed, thank you very much. Thank you. And thank you for watching.